Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your tarot reading. So, um, when I was shuffling out this spread, I had two images that kind of popped up for you. I'm going to relay them, um, the first one first, and then the other one towards the middle of the reading. Because I feel like the energy, there has um, been like some massive changes happening, okay? And so, the first image, I'm recording this. So I feel like I'm picking up the energy of the first image. So first of all, what I saw was um, I see this man and uh, he's been traveling on foot for a very, very, very long time, okay? And uh, he's carrying like a little uh, pouch with him with his clothing, his personal you know, effects and, and whatnot, but he's traveling very light and he's kind of travel weary. And he's just a little bit tired, hungry, exhausted, and he just, you know, wants to know like what his des next destination is going to be. And so he comes across this. Um, it looks like a, a, an outpost. There's a sign signaling, you know, what direction to go towards, and it's in front of this outpost. And this outpost, there's like a place to rest, and you know, a place to get water, a place to just kind of uh, put his things down and just you know relax for a little bit so he's in this little uh, outpost it's really pretty though there are a lot of lanterns that are um, put up and so it's daytime when he's there and he's just like I want to stay here I want to uh, see what it looks like at night when the lanterns are all lit up and he's the only person there and so he stays and stays and stays and then you know the sun sets and then the lanterns come on and as the lanterns come on, then he's looking at the signpost that's in front of this rest station. And funnily enough, it's pointing in two opposite directions, okay, two different directions. On the one side, and this is like kind of like pointing to my left, which is usually what I indicate as like the pass. It says the pass and there's the path is lit and there are lanterns strewn along the way and it looks really... Um, I, I want to say it looks very inviting and then pointing to the right is the future and also lanterns strewn along the way and it's um it's really inviting as well so both paths look very very inviting and so where he's at right now it seems to me pretty much like the present okay so he has an option to go to the past or go to the future and it seems like he is in this um, rest station he's very comfortable and he's trying to figure out you know where to go okay like where do i go from here what is next and so the way this man looks i just feel like for many of you um you're working yourself too hard okay you're kind of like grinding yourself into the ground um i don't know if this is you know just a lot of things that are happening around you that you have to do damage control on putting out fires or even like just taking care of other people there are a few cards in this spread that indicate to me that you know you you kind of need a lot of time to yourself okay so the first thing that i'm seeing here is the hermit and this is pretty much, you know, um, taking the time to kind of be alone, listening to our own voice, not having our decisions or our plans be affected by other people's ideas, um, by other people's expectations, by what we're supposed to do to please other people. So I do feel like you might have spent a lot of time taking other people's um, advice or, or, considerating, uh, or consideration into account when you're making some major life uh, choices or making some major life decisions. And I feel like for this month, the energy is kind of like telling you to turn inwards a little bit, figuring out where you are right now, taking stock of everything that you have in your life and trying to decide on the next step, okay? I do sense, once again, this yearning for something new, this yearning for a journey to start somewhere, like kind of like starting on a, a clean page, okay? Rewriting your story or writing your story, writing the next chapter, and even thinking about like the next adventure that you want to get into, the next thing that you want to kind of like um, swim towards. And I'm sensing that 
you have spent a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, how to juggle between what other people expect of you and what it is that you want out of your life. And I feel like for this month, you're definitely at a point where you're in the driver's seat and you're trying to decide on the next phase and you're trying you need to be making this decision independent of other people what other people want from you what other people expect you to do and just kind of you know listen to your own calling okay um the other two cards that came out in the deck that signify to me the need to really take care of your health and to you know um figure out if there are things like joint pains or aches and pains or whatever ailments or whatever symptoms that you're feeling it is really important to you know take the time prioritize your health um go see a physician if you need to and really you know learn to take care of yourself okay because i feel that i i feel like something some things that have been neglected are starting to bother okay so in this way this can be like a physical symptom like aches and pains here and there and you're just like oh it's not too bad you know i'll um i'll, I'll, I'll tend to it when i have time and then before you know it you know uh, weeks or months might have gone by and you're just like it's really really it's getting worse it's escalating like there's more throbs and more pain but you're just like I'm too busy right now I really don't have to, the time for it so this is the month where you're really going to need to you know take the, the, the day off take care of yourself and to really prioritize whatever it is that needs maintenance on your person or whatever that needs maintenance around you okay so i feel like there's something here it's um seeing this heart and there's a string okay so literally tugging at your heartstrings but what it is is uh, i'm sensing that whatever has been neglected uh, is starting to kind of like get to you is starting to bother you it's starting to kind of um, weave its way back in and it's time for you to address these issues and I feel for many of you it could be health related for others of you it could be like um, um, somebody who might feel a little bit neglected for some of you who have you know family and children this could be making promises to like a child or making promises to a significant other or if you're in a relationship making promises to somebody and being too overworked too overwhelmed and not being able to follow through with the promises and now I feel like it's time for you to revisit these things that have been promised but for whatever reason have never been followed through and then I'm also sensing for some of you, whatever has been neglected, like if there's like lack of communication, if there are things that have been kind of like left without any closure, these things are coming in tugging at you. And I feel like you want to really take the time in the month of December to kind of wrap up these loose ends so that you can figure a way forward, okay? Or you can at least set yourself up for a clean slate when we move into 2020. So December is um, it's the end of the year and it's a time where a lot of people feel like they need to wrap up projects, they need to wrap up things and they need to kind of uh, get themselves ready and to you know bring about the new year, bring about the new energy. So it's sort of like that last push for us to take care of things. Um, you know tie up loose ends, take care of unfinished business so that we can kind of cast them aside and move into a clean slate so that's what I'm feeling right now um, I keep seeing especially for many of you um, like pains in the lower extremities joints um, ankles legs knees things like that and even like um, you know like um, we have here the Ten of Swords, and the Ten of Swords is needing a lot of, um, it, it's like generalized pain, like body aches, needing to go to see a massage therapist, needing needing like, you know, like a deep, um, like acupressure, almost like type of uh, a, a massage, needing to work out all those knots and all those, um, you know, the, all the tension in the back of your neck of all throughout your body so that you can feel release okay so i feel like there's some physical symptoms here that might be keeping you up at night that might be hindering 
And overall, I feel like you know stress and lack of sleep that might be getting in the way of you、uh, of your performance during the day. Okay, so. Whatever it is that is、uh, has been neglected, it is time to really address these issues, and it is time to you know find a solution, wrap up loose ends, and and move forward. Okay.、Um, the other image, funnily enough, is、um, I literally see this、uh, green little green leprechaun. Okay. And he's got that hat with the、um, three leaf clover on it. And、um, he's like literally dancing around in a field of clover. Okay, just like jumping around, kind of laughing. So I'm seeing like just a field of green. And so this spells to me a lot of luck, a lot of、uh, transformation when it comes to things. And I feel like it's a continuation, a little bit of、um, the last month's reading where I mentioned there might have been some unintended consequences. And I mentioned they weren't that bad. And it's like you you do something and you you were thinking like oh no, it's going to lead to a specific outcome. But then the outcome is expect、uh, is like、um, totally unexpected, totally outside of the realm of possibility. So I see that energy coming in with the field of clover. Which signifies, you know, tremendous luck, just abundance, having really, really good luck on your side, and then this leprechaun just jumping up and down all around this field of clover. So what I feel as well is,、um, I really sense there is some very strong spiritual protection here. Okay, we have here the four of wands. You are in、um, kind of like being blessed, being. Um, being enclosed or encased in a sacred space, where things, bad energies, bad intentions, bad people,、uh, bad situations will not affect you, will not kind of like burst your bubble, and will not have any bearing on you. Okay, so I feel like for many of you, there is some really, really strong divine protection, protection coming in from family, especially from people that have passed on. Who are you know looking over you, or especially protection from family who really trust you, who uphold or will who will try to uphold your honor or who will try to uphold your、um, reputation. So, for example,、uh, just an example. Okay, I don't feel like this is going to apply to you, but what I feel is like. Um, for example, somebody might say, "Like I don't know if I trust the Gemini to follow through on what they say," and somebody from your family unit might say, "Like no, the Gemini has never,、um, you know,、uh, um, proven them like proven that the Gemini has never backtracked on their words." So I hold them, I take them at face value, and I hold them to their words. So I feel like there is, you know, like a. It's a narrative indicating to me that somebody from your family unit or somebody that you consider family, they're going to stand up for you. They're going to say really good things about you, and they're going to kind of like change a situation around based on how convincing they are when they speak or vouch for your character. So I feel like it's a very very strong. Sense of like spiritual protection coming through from the family unit, and especially if you have members of your family that have passed on, there's very strong divine protection, and there's a lot of communication and messages as well coming through, especially for people that have passed on. Okay, we have the death card, and this is not meant to be spooky or scary. We have the death card and the bird here, which indicates to me communication. Okay. I understand that for some of you, you've been feeling a little bit trapped for a while, okay? And I feel like、um, the energy was very, very tense over the summer, okay? Especially like around your birthday time,、um, you had a lot on your plate. You had a lot of things that were, I almost feel like anxiety、uh, provoking, okay? Anxiety inducing, anxiety provoking,、uh, lack of restful sleep. Um, not being able to quiet your mind, okay, and 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 we're talking like staying up,、um, thinking about a lot of things. Some of them are real things. Some of them are imagined. So like、uh, real scenarios versus imagined scenarios. Some of them crisscross, and you're just like 
up at night, you're you're constantly um, back and forth thinking about things, thinking about like how things are gonna play out, thinking about what direction to to take, and I'm literally seeing like um, that that same traveler. And they're like, you know, ten roads just forked out ahead of him, and he doesn't know which path to take. Okay, so I just feel like you've been feeling this way, especially since your birthday, late May, and、um, the beginning part of June. You've been feeling like responsibilities were piling on. You didn't have time to yourself. You you didn't have time to really be alone with your thoughts and to figure things out and to be very definitive with the decisions that you're making. And so you you felt almost like you were spinning in circle. Like which way do I go? I just feel like I'm in this endless feedback loop and I really can't break out of it. And then I also feel like the month of November. Okay, as we are doing this reading, and as you have already experienced the beginning of November, some major things have come into the picture to kind of like solidify things, to give you more information, to solidify, I guess, some of the decisions and some of the, of the choices that you need to make. And you know, those、um, seven different forks in the road have kind of,、um, I I want to say, coalesce. Converge, almost like a, a convergence, and so coming into this month of December, I see like the choices are narrowed down, past or future. Okay, and you're just like in a position where you're going to have to choose. And I feel like once again, both paths are lit up with those lanterns, which indicate to me that you know they are just as.、Uh, Neither one is more favorable. They are just as good, and I feel that either way that you you choose to take, you're going to be safe. You're going to be protected, and I feel like there will be another rest stop along the way for you to rest, for you to reassess your decision. So whatever decision you're making, is not final. Does that make sense? It's not a final destination just yet. You're still continuing your journey, and so whatever decision that you make is a continuation. And at any point in time, if you don't, I guess, like if you don't、um, find yourself enjoying the route or enjoying the the road that you're taking, you can always backtrack, and you can always, you know. Go back to the starting point and start over. So I do feel like I, I do feel like it's a continuation of the journey that you're you're going on or you're embarking on, and there isn't a right or a wrong. Okay, so that's the first thing,、um, or rather, that's the second image.、Um, really needing time to yourself, making decisions independent of other people. And being able to be resolute and sticking to a certain path, okay, I feel like will be really beneficial for you because you have been spending so much time ruminating, ruminating over our choices, decisions,、um, you know, where to live, where to stay,、um, how to take care of this problem, how to take care of that, and all of it was really just weighing down on you, and you just felt like things were happening to you. You felt like you didn't have control over the things that were going on in your surrounding, and so this is a, a month to really reclaim that sense of you know free will, that sense of agency in your own life, and to figure out you know what path is best for you as an individual rather than you as a unit.、Um, There are a few more messages. They didn't come out in、um, pictures, but they did come out, you know, verbally.、Um, one of them, I, I'm sensing here, like this sense of family. Okay,、um, family can be like a, a tremendous safety net. Okay, I have here the Ten of Cups, and the Ten of Cups is、um, it's like the ideal family situation. Um, for some of you, I do sense this overwhelming, like、um, romanticism. This overwhelming sense of romanticism when it comes to the family.、Um, you might have grown up in somewhat of a dysfunctional family, or even a family that was like unconventional, 
um, non-traditional in some way okay or even I, I feel for some of you like a broken home and you're trying so hard to you know if you have children you're trying so hard to give them everything that you didn't have okay you're trying so hard to give them like that sense of normalcy that sense of traditional family unit and you're struggling so hard to provide them with everything and I feel like it's taking its toll on you and I also feel like you know uh, wanting to create kind of like an idyllic um, romanticized image of what family should be at the expense of truly feeding into the emotional you know the, the nurturing of that family unit does that make sense I hope that makes sense to you because I feel like in the spirit of trying to create that idyllic you know um, mom dad two kids um, car in the garage picket uh, white picket fence you know that that nice little country home um, the emotions are not there so you might be working really really hard to sustain the family and you might not have time to be emotionally or physically available for the people in that family unit okay you might be struggling really really hard to take care of mom and dad and you're working all the time and you're not really home to kind of like enjoy you know a, a family dinner with them so I'm seeing here where something is done in a very counter uh, per, like counterintuitive way to achieve something or a vision of something when in fact the emotions are all that is needed in this situation so I hope that makes sense for, for um, some of you um, so what I'm seeing here is to kind of like realign yourself with the fact that you know really getting down to the nitty-gritty of what is really important is the emotional closeness it's the emotional availability how emotionally available you are to the people who need you when they need you and going using that as kind of like the barometer or the gauge of what you're expected to do okay so I feel almost like um, since the summertime you're doing things that you feel people expect of you but you're not really asking the people whether or not this is something that they want you to do for them so I feel like you you might be working based on false expectations because you thought that's what they wanted but all along that was not what they wanted that was never discussed and that was never like explicitly said and what I feel is you're realigning yourself and trying to get to the bottom of you know what is it that the other person might expect from me for some of you I do feel heavy energies of family okay um, I see a lot of people here with um, you know so for example um, I do see the situation where you know for example okay and I feel like this might apply as well um, mom and dad you know they they might want you to be in a specific profession um, but they never forced it on you they might occasionally say oh oh you know being a doctor is such a um, an admirable um, profession but they never expected you to grow up you know go through med school be racked in you know debt like student loan debt to pursue this goal and working like 80 90 um, hours a week to be a doctor and never have any time for yourself and never have any time for family and never have any time to see them so I feel like you thought they wanted some something but you never asked them and you did it anyways and then it turns out that that was not what they wanted okay I'm also seeing this playing out in relationship where you thought the partner might want something from you so you did it and then it turns out that that was just you know very very low on the bottom of their list of priorities and so I feel this is a good month to kind of like reassess between you and another person especially a family member a relationship um, or a significant other a relationship partner or a significant other other to kind of like realign yourself and figure out 
expectations, okay? What do you expect from them? What do they expect from you? And you're going to start to realize that you have to recalibrate because you might have been way off when it comes to assessing what they're expecting from you or they might have been way off, you know, based on what they thought you were expecting from them. I do feel though it's coming a little bit more from the your end where you thought they wanted something. You spent so much time and energy to work towards that and turns out that wasn't what they wanted at all. So, you know, unintended consequences or unintended side effects or something you thought was one way is turning out to be something different. And something that you thought was very very difficult to achieve you felt like it was done and over with there's nothing i can do to fix this situation and then you know you turn around and it seems like a very very quick fix okay so that's that's what i'm feeling here the an, another message that is coming through as well is um i do sense there is a person here um the person is showing up as a fire energy, so Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, but I, I do feel the energy is, um, I'm not reading so much like, you know, the signs, I'm reading the person. So we have here the Queen of Wands, and the way this card is showing up, it indicates to me that somebody didn't realize how their actions or how their words have affected you okay um i have you dealing here with somebody who's very blunt very blunt very light no nonsense they don't mince words they don't really sugarcoat they don't sugarcoat uh, whatever comes to mind whatever comes to their mind comes out of their mouth and they're very very unfiltered okay when they're upset there's like fire and fury when they're happy, there's a lot of love. There's a lot of just um, warmth in their presence, okay? So I feel like you're, you're dealing with someone who is uh, very emotionally expressive, verbally expressive. When they're hurt, they're going to tell you that they're hurt. And um, I feel like there was something that happened and this person did not realize uh, to what extent they hurt you. This person didn't realize that what they said was insensitive. This person didn't realize that what they said um, undermined you or what they said was, um, I want to say like was either condescending, was either kind of like hitting below the belt or um, it, it just felt to me like it was unexpected, unintended. And so there's going to be communication coming in to kind of clear this situation between you and this person. I'm also feeling as well, um, when you're wounded, you really withdraw, okay? When you're wounded, you don't want to talk about, like, you don't want to sit there and talk about, like, um, you said this and then it made me feel this way, or I said this and then you start to withdraw, you start to retaliate. I feel like, you know, discussing feelings and emotions, it's not your cup of tea. It's not a, a, um, something that you want to spend time thinking about, talking about, and having long, you know, discussions into the night about these emotions. Like, it, it makes you uncomfortable. And so these things were never properly discussed or addressed with another person. Um, I'm also seeing as well difficulties um, dealing with the mother figure and um, where somebody is... Um, is a little bit like unfiltered with the things that they say. It could be, you know, dealing with someone who's who's very critical, who um, it's hard for them to give you a compliment. It's hard for them to express, you know, gratitude and 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 um, it's just hard for them to express gratitude. It's hard for them to give compliments. It's hard for them to praise. It's hard for them to, you know. I, I just feel like they lack that in their own life and so it's really hard for them to pay compliments to other people and I also feel it's hard for them to pay compliments to you they might have felt it they might have wanted to say it but for whatever reason when it comes it just never came out I just feel like it never came out and so you weren't really sure how you 
where you stand with this person. You weren't really sure if what you were doing was pleasing to them, or you weren't sure if they're, you know, um, critical of you. And so, what I do feel as well is, you might have been, you know, under like, um, you might have been living in the self doubt based on your interaction with this person, and it colors the way in which you acted with other people. You know, not being able to pay compliments, not being able to open up emotionally, not being able to, you know, kind of. Um, open yourself up to pay other compliments to give gratitude to give thanks and to be emotionally present for other people so i do see here a little bit of a um a hang up and i do feel that you know since for the past few months you have been made aware of this and 